be working on creating a catapult in SketchUp. The catapult we're going to design, you will then be going back and building in the production lab. To do this, you're going to start by clicking on the SketchUp icon loaded on your desktop, which will look like a set of red and white stairs. Once it opens, we're going to start by saving a file for myself, whoever's currently running the mouse, and my partner if I have one. And we're gonna work on both drawings at the same time. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna go File, Save As, and I'm gonna choose this PC, Tech Drop, and you're gonna go to whatever class period you are currently in. I'm gonna use period three, rotation four is my example. And I'm gonna go to the folder that says SketchUp Catapult, and when I give it a name, I'm going to give it my first and last name. And I'm going to hit save. I'm then going to do the same thing. I'm just going to simply go ahead and say file, save as, and I'm going to save it as my partner's name. And my partner is Billy Bob. And I hit save. Now you're going to notice Billy Bob's is open, but mine is not. I have to click on the file folder and I have to go back and I need to go ahead and say tech drop period three rotation four and you're going to go to whatever period you saved and whatever rotation you're currently in SketchUp Catapult and I'm going to open up first and last name now if it asks you you want to open up SketchUp you say yes and you hit OK. Now, I should now have two drawings open. You're gonna see me demo in one, and it'll magically kind of appear in the other because I'm not gonna show you all those. I'm gonna simply remind you that you go back and you draw the other persons. So I'm gonna go to the first and last name, the one whoever was first running the mouse, and we're going to start by drawing our catapult. Now, we're gonna be using the toolbars to do this. And you're gonna need the getting started toolbar at the top, and possibly the large toolbar on the side. Now there's times that these may not be here. So if this was accidentally gone, the way that you get it back is you go to View, Toolbars, and you make sure there's a check mark in Getting Started and Large Tool Set. If a check mark is gone, they disappear. So all you have to do to simply get them back is make sure they're checked. Now it might happen that somebody accidentally floats it off to the side because they didn't realize they were touching the mouse. All you got to do to put it back is bring it to the middle and pop it in. But we're going to start by drawing the pieces of our catapult. Our catapult is going to be made by three quarters and three quarters inch lumber. So we're going to use that as our sizes as we go. We're going to start by moving over and you'll see how it tells me I'm going to use the rectangle. And I'm going to come down here and I'm going to start moving it off to the right. I'm going to draw a small rectangle that's going to go 3.5 comma 0.75 and I'm going to hit enter and now it's super small so I'm going to hit zoom extents this arrow right here I can also use the scroll wheel which is the wheel in the middle of my mouse and if I spin it it will go zoom in and out if I push and hold it will let me orbit I can also choose those commands from either the getting started or the large tool palette. But I'm going to go ahead and choose the hand. I'm going to move this over a little bit, zoom out just a little bit so I can see my drawing. And you're going to have to kind of move around your drawing as you go. So once again, I would go ahead and I would draw that same thing in my partner's drawing. So I can simply do one or two steps at a time, but you're going to make sure you're drawing it in both people's drawings. So you're going to go ahead and make sure that you're trading the mouse back and forth, both of you drawing your drawings. Now I'm back to mine, the first and last name, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to push pull, and I'm going to grab, and I'm going to push pull, so you can see how it's dotted, not dotted, so it's dotted, so I click on it one time, I move it up, and I'm going to type in 3 slash 4 and hit enter. Now, I need two of these pieces, so I'm going to scroll out a little bit. I'm going to grab the arrow, and I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to select it. I'm going to come up here to Edit, Copy, Edit, Paste. 
And if I want, I can move it by clicking the end point. Come in here, go over here. I selected the move command, click the end point, come into this end point, and I can drag it straight across. Now, we're gonna end up moving that piece to the end, but first we're gonna start by drawing some pieces we need going down the side. So I'm gonna spin to the side so I can see it a little bit better and move out so that I make sure it lets me draw. I'm then gonna go ahead and grab the rectangle command. I'm gonna to come to this far corner and I'm gonna type or click on it once. And I'm gonna move my mouse back and down and I'm gonna type in 10 comma 0.75 and hit enter. I'm then gonna do the same thing from this front corner and I'm gonna come up towards that rectangle I just drew and I'm gonna type 10 comma 0.75 and hit enter. I'm then gonna go ahead and push pull straight up so it says endpoint or on surface so endpoint midpoint so it's the exact same height as my other piece i now need to move this end to the far end to block it in so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to orbit around a little bit i'm going to grab that selection i'm going to say move and i'm going to go from endpoint down to endpoint and so I've created, I can do zoom extents, a nice little base for my catapult. Now, once again, you would make sure you're trading the mouse, trading the keyboard, and let your partner draw theirs. So once again, you're taking turns, and you should be allowing your partner to draw theirs. So you're trading the mouse back and forth. Our next step is going to be to draw our arms that are going to go up in our supports. To do that, we're going to go ahead and we're going to go to the rectangle command and I'm going to get to one side or the other and I'm going to find the midpoint and I'm going to come down in front of the midpoint with a rectangle and I'm going to go 0.75 comma 0.75 and hit enter. I'm then going to push pull this side up a total of 8.25 and hit enter. I'm gonna orbit around. So I'm staying on the same front side and I'm gonna grab my square command, rectangle command, click the midpoint, come down towards the front of the catapult, type 0.75 comma 0.75, hit enter. And once again, I'm gonna push pull up 8.25 or I can simply just go up till I see endpoint of my other piece. Now, for my next piece, I need to create a support going across the front and the back of here. To do that, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna draw a rectangle out here in front. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna move it back into the right and I'm gonna type in five comma point seven five and hit enter. I'm then gonna go ahead and push pull up and I'm gonna type point seven five and hit enter. I'm then gonna go ahead and copy this piece. So I'm gonna turn so I can see it. Making sure I'm just grabbing that piece. So that's the only part that's blue. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna say move. Sorry, copy, edit, copy, edit, paste. Get my new one. Then I'm gonna go ahead and go to this top right corner and say move. I'm gonna put it right up here where it says endpoint. I then can go back and grab my first one. Click move. Go to the top left corner, go up here to the end point on the other side and create my brace. Now, once again, I'm gonna trade places, let my partner draw theirs. Now, once my partner is caught up to me, so I both of my, have our drawings ready to go, we're going to work on putting a angle brace onto the front of our catapult. We're gonna start by putting these angle brackets right in here on the front. To do that though, we need to move our catapult a little bit to the right. We might have to zoom out a little bit, but I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna grab this corner and I'm gonna kind of come out and I'll create a dashed line and say from point. Out here, I'm gonna draw a little tiny rectangle that is 0.75 comma 0.75. I'm then going to push pull that rectangle straight up a total of 10 inches. So I'm going to type 10 and hit enter. 
I now need to rotate it and copy it before I put it over here. So I'm going to grab the whole thing, making sure it's the only thing highlighted blue. I'm then going to click on rotate. And I'm going to come to this left corner with my compass or my protractor on red. And I'm going to click the endpoint. And I'm going to come over here on the green and click one more time. And then I'm going to rotate it to 30 degrees. So down in the corner where we see the angle says 30. And I'm going to hit enter. When I do that, I now have this piece ready to copy. So I'm going to go edit, copy, edit, paste, because it's already selected blue. And I now have them ready to move. I'm going to come up to the top to midpoint. And I'm going to grab that midpoint. I'm going to put it right here on the corner of what looks like a letter T. I'm then going to go ahead and zoom out. And this is easier said than done sometimes. I'm going to come back, find an angle, which allows me to grab that other one. Go to the other side of it. Click on move. Come back to the midpoint. Put it on the other side of that T. Now, we need to erase a few pieces, but first we've got to draw a couple lines in here. So you can see right down here, there's not actually a line, and I want to create one. So I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to go to endpoint or intersection to endpoint. I'm going to do the same on this other side. So I've drawn a line across the bottom. I need to do the same across the top. So I'm going to come to the front of that T, endpoint to endpoint. Like I said, it might tell you intersection. It's fine if it does. To endpoint. Now I'm ready to grab the eraser and erase those parts that are overlapping from my piece that I put in. And I'm going to do this on both sides. So I come in here, erase, erase, and you should see that you don't lose any of your sides. If you would, it means you forgot to draw a line in. You just simply draw the line back in and it will come back in. But I'm going to orbit around erasing and trimming up that top. Now once I get the top trimmed up, I need to do that same thing for the bottom. So I need to trim these pieces down and to do that. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go to line command. And I'm going to come to endpoint where it meets and I'm going to come straight across on the red and it says on edge. Then I simply go endpoint along the green on edge and then endpoint and it should hit that intersection. Once I've drawn that on that side, I can come back and I can erase these lines that I no longer need. I then would go ahead and do the same thing for the other side. Making sure I'm on the red and then the green and then back on the red. Grab my eraser. Erase the lines I no longer need getting it ready to go. I then can zoom out and I have a nice solid looking catapult that's ready to get our holes located, our arm made, and our dowels ready to go, and then we're almost ready for our catapult. But once again, make sure you're pausing, letting your partner catch up and do the exact same thing on their drawings. We're going to start by getting our holes located that we end up needing to drill in the side of our catapult. So we're going to end up doing this twice, one on each side. But we're going to grab the line command and we're going to come to the top and we're going to go from midpoint straight down on the blue axis two inches, so two enter. We're then going to grab the circle and if it's not a circle, notice how it says size 24 down here. Just type in 24 and hit enter. But once we have a circle, we're going to come back and we're going to type three after clicking on the endpoint, three slash 16 and hit enter. We're then going to grab the pencil again. We're going to go down on the blue three force or three slash four, hit enter. And we're going to draw another circle at three sixteenths. Three slash sixteen. Do the same thing, pencil. Three fourths of an inch, three slash four. Circle. 3 slash 16, hit enter. One more time. Come down from the midpoint, 3 slash 4. Go to the circle. Come over 3 slash 16. Zoom out a little bit, and we got to draw one up from the bottom. So we're going to go to the bottom. And we're going to come up from the midpoint, 
1.5. And we're going to draw a circle at 3 slash 16 for our radius. And we have all these drawn. Now, before I go to the other side, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say erase, 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 leaving just the circles. We don't need any of those lines left in there. We're just drawing the circles. I'm then going, going to rotate around to the other side, and I'm going to do the exact same process. So once again, that was a line from the top, midpoint, going down to, grabbing the circle command, coming out 3 slash 16 for our radius, hitting enter, line, going from the midpoint down 3 quarters, hitting enter, circle command, Going out 3 sixteenths again. Line. Going down from the midpoint 3 quarters or endpoint. Grabbing our pencil command. Going out 3 sixteenths. One more time, we grab the pencil. Go down on the blue 3 quarters. One more time with the circle, going out 3 sixteenths. So we make a total of four of those, grab the pencil, go from the bottom midpoint up 1.5 and create our last circle. So we're going to go ahead, come from an end point, 3 slash sixteenths. Grab our eraser and erase those lines one more time. Now we're almost done with the catapult frame. We now have to do one last thing after we erase these lines, and that is we need to push pull these holes to make them actually holes that have been drilled. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I'm going to push pull over here till it says on edge. Grab it. Push pull till it says on edge. Push pull till it says on edge. On edge on edge and you'll see it looks like there's five holes now drilled through that piece rotate back to that first side push pull till it says on edge click push pull till on edge click on edge and click one more time on edge and click we now have our catapult frame all built and ready to go once again we would make sure we're trading places letting our partner catch up and draw theirs. Now you should have two drawings because your partner should be catching up. So if I go down here, you can see we're both at the same step. We're now ready to draw our catapult arm and dowels. We'll end up having two dowels. There's gonna be one down here that holds the rubber band. Another one over here that ends up being for our adjustable arm. And we're gonna be able to adjust the height of our arm we're also going to be able to adjust the length of our arm because we're going to have these variable holes that are drilled. So just because you're building the same partner as your catapult as your partner, you might decide for a little less power or a little more power and adjust your length and your angle. But to do that, we're going to move our catapult forward to the left and we're going to draw behind our catapult. And I'm going to try to put it kind of towards the midpoint. So I'm going to come out here and I'm going to grab a rectangle. I'm going to click on midpoint and I'm going to come out from point and I'm going to draw a rectangle and it's going to go back what will be 0.75 comma 10 and I'm going to hit enter and I'm going to have this arm back here and I can move that arm and my catapult a little bit so I can see better and I'm going to focus on my arm right now so I'm going to zoom in here and I'm going to go ahead and push pull this up a total of point 75 and hit enter. I now need to once again drill some holes in here and once we're zoomed in on our arm we're going to draw some holes for adjustment of our dowels and also for hooking to our rubber band and our dowels. So we're going to start by going from the midpoint coming over what will be 3 slash 4 and hitting enter. We're then going to draw a circle once again at 3 sixteenths. 
we go 3 slash 16 and hit enter. We're then going to grab our line command and we're going to go over this time 1.25 and hit enter. Grab our circle command, do 3 slash 16, hit enter. Grab our pencil command, go over 3 slash 4. Line command, or circle command, 3 slash 16, hit enter. Line command, 3 fourths of an inch over, circle. Once again, type it in at 3 sixteenths of an inch, hit enter. One more time, we go back to the pencil command, 3 slash 4, hit enter. Go back to the circle command, 3 slash 16, hit enter. And we have five holes that we're going to end up drawing. And we'll go ahead, type in line command, 3 slash 4, Hit enter, circle command, 3 slash 16. So we will end up making five holes for our arm, for our center point, and one for where the rubber band is going to go. We're going to erase the lines then. Once again, we'll go ahead and push pull through this piece. I'm going to grab the push-pull command. I'm going to push-pull straight across. Straight across till it says on edge, on edge, on edge, on edge, and on edge. Now, we're almost done with our arm. We have to make a spot for our device that we're going to, our projectile that we're going to launch. That is going to go up on the top. So to do that, we're going to draw a line from the midpoint. We're going to come down three-fourths of an inch so we find our center. Now, we're going to go ahead and we're going to draw a circle, but we're going to draw this off to the side. So I'm going to come end point, and I'm going to come over from point. And I'm going to move a little bit so I can see where I'm at. So I go circle, and I'm going to make my circle a radius of what would be 11 sixteenths and I'm going to hit enter. I'm then going to go ahead and I'm going to offset this and so I click offset and I go inside the circle and I want to offset it a total of 1 16th of an inch. So I got this thin little ring going around my circle which I'm going to push pull up 0.35 and hit enter. Okay, we're making a little cap. Now we need to move this cap to the center of this line, which can get a little tricky. To do that, we need the center of the circle. So all I'm going to do is click on this one, come out till it tells me center, and then I'm just going to draw a line along the green axis. There we go. Now, I'm going to grab everything that I need to move, which is this cap. So I'm going to come out here, grab it all. But before I move it, I need to select up here under View, Face Style, X-Ray. Now everything's gone, so see-through. So I'm going to go Move, and I need to make sure I'm on that endpoint. And then I come down and I zoom over and around until it says endpoint of that line. I then can come back and go to View. Turn off x-ray, and you'll see my cap is nicely centered right there on my arm. I then can grab the arrow. All right, don't worry about erasing any of that. Just leave it as is. It's okay if that line is on there. But we have our arm. We have our frame. To put them together, we need some dowels. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the circle. And I'm going to come out from the midpoint, and I'm going to come up from it, and it's going to say from point. And out here, I'm going to simply draw a circle, and I'm going to say 3 slash 1 sixteenths and hit enter. Now, I can go ahead and I can do the same thing from that point. 
Come straight out a little farther ahead. Once again, 3 slash 16, hit enter. And I now have two circles. To make them the right length, they need to be the width of the frame. So all I have to do is go push pull, click on the inside of that circle, come out to this endpoint. Do the same with this one. Come out to the endpoint, go to the other side, click on the inside of the circle, come out to endpoint, and come out to endpoint. I now have the two dowels I need, my frame, and everything ready to go. What I would do next is I need to color it in, and I'm going to use paint to do that. Now, we're going to make ours a natural color, so we're going to select wood floor. And we're going to simply go ahead and we're going to paint all the way around our catapult. Now don't paint the cap because the cap is not going to be wood color. We're going to actually use a bottle cap for that. But I can zoom all the way around, making sure I get everything painted in, and then when I'm done, I can take a world tour to make sure I see all of it's painted and ready to go. Now, I'm not going to be a stickler. You don't have to worry about painting the inside of the holes. If you want to, you can. All right, just like I can come back here and I can paint the outside of the dowels. All right, so if I wanted, I can come in, I go like that, and I can paint the inside of each hole. But if you forget the inside, that's okay. I won't penalize you for that. Now, once you've zoomed around and you see I have the whole thing painted, you're going to paint the cap. When it comes to the cap, just simply go to colors named and pick a color. Whatever color you would like to paint your cap, you can. I'm going to paint mine red. Same deal, you can move it around, zoom in. I can come paint the inside of my cap. It's fine if it's got a little dash look like that. That's just because it's sharing a surface. And then when I'm all done, I can simply go zoom accents. Now, my catapult is almost ready to go. But once again, I would make sure that my partner has caught up and been taking turns drawing theirs. So once again, you should have been making your partners at long the same time as you were making yours. When you have them done, you need to add a couple of projectiles for this object to be thrown, or for this catapult to throw. We're going to simply put those off in front of the catapult. So we're going to go ahead and move, and over here off in the front, we're going to draw a couple of projectiles. So we're going to create a circle, and we're going to come off the end point, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to come out just in front of it, and we can always move it away later, but we're going to click on it, making sure it's on the blue axis, or blue. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to make that circle a diameter of about two inches. So we're going to make a radius of one inch. And we're going to hit enter. Now, we're going to make what is called a donut. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and we're going to erase the inside. Now we're going to go look at that circle and we want to draw another circle off of that circle so if you kind of come up above you'll see what I'm talking about but it's going to go on the red axis and once again we're going to go ahead and we're going to make this one 0.5 and hit enter and we get a circle drawn on top of the circle now we're going to use the follow me command and we're going to push pull all the way around the circle till we get back to the beginning and let go and we'll create a donut now, 
That's one object that we're going to make our catapult throw. The other one we're going to make our catapult throw is a spear. So once again, off to the front, I'm going to grab the circle command. Now I'm going to come to the other corner. I'm going to come out here on the blue, once again, putting it away from there. And I'm going to draw a one inch radius again. This time though, I want to make a sphere. So what I need to do is I want to draw a line straight up from the center. So I'm going to go to the circle, I'm going to find the center, and I'm going to go straight up one inch, enter. Now I can go ahead and I'm going to draw a circle that goes around the front, but I only need half of it. And so what that's going to look like is I'm going to come in and I'm going to go circle command. I want to go down to that center or end point and I want it to be on the green and I'm going to go straight up on the green until I get to the top of that one inch line. I now have two circles, but I'm going to just do a half circle. So I'm going to go ahead and get the pencil command, go straight down from that end point, and I'm going to erase this other circle. So I'm going to erase, erase, and once again, I'm going to erase the inside. So I simply right click, say erase, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use the follow me command one more time. So I'm going to come over here to follow me, click on it, and I'm going to take this circle all the way around until I get back to the beginning and I let go and I create a sphere. So I now have two objects that I want to throw. I'm going to move them one at a time. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to grab this one and I'm going to move it and I'm just going to click somewhere down here on the bottom on that end point. And I'm going to put this one on top so it looks like my catapult is going to throw it. So I'm just going to come in here and put it somewhere in on my cap. It's okay if it's not perfect, but we're going to set it on there so it's ready to be thrown. We're then going to do the same thing, grabbing and selecting the donut. We're going to move it to the end by clicking on it somewhere by the cap. I then can go ahead and go zoom extents and I want to paint my objects. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to go paint and you can paint these whatever color you would like. I'm going to make mine look like stone. So I'm going to choose stone and I'm going to paint one with a red brick. And I'm going to paint the other one. We'll go with this masonry marble, right? Now, once you have those painted and put in place, your drawing is ready to dimension. So I'm going to zoom out just a little bit and I'm going to select my dimensions. And I wanted to mention a few things that we're going to need for reference when we go to build. The first one is the overall length of our catapult. And we'll find out it's 11 and a half inches. We also want to know the length of just the inside piece. So I'm going to come down here to endpoint so I can remember that that's 10 inches. I want to know the height of my catapult. So I'm going to come down here top to bottom. I want to know the lengths of my dowels. You might have to zoom in for this one. Should be a blue line eventually on here. Make sure I got my dimensions selected. There we go. I got my blue line right there. I can bring my five inches straight up. So once again, I got my zoom extents. Now I want to know how big this piece is. So I'm going to go end point to end point. And the length is five. I have my height. I got my width. I got my length. I need my width over here, end point to end point. Going up so I know that's three and a half. I want to know the length of my arm. So I come out here so I know my arm is 10 inches. I want to know where the hole started. So I come down to the, the circle, go down until it says center. And right there, center, move it over so we got so we have two inches. I then would do the same thing going from center. Sometimes you might have to change your perspective a little bit. Make sure it's giving me my dimension. There we go, I had it. Center, oh, had it. Center to center. Let me know that that's three quarters of an inch. Last one I want to know is to the bottom. 
Once again, looking for it to say center. Get that circle to highlight. There we go. One and a half inches. And once again, you can always move them out if you need to. And I'm going to go zoom extents one more time. I can see my dimensions. We're going to come over and dimension these last circles that we did over here, and then our drawing will be ready to print. So I come out to center. Know that that's three quarters. Make sure it says center. That one should be two inches. And we can hit zoom extents because we know those other ones were three quarters of an inch off. Once you have it where you can see everything and you've zoomed extent, the last thing you need to do before you print is you're going to go ahead and you're going to select text or the leader command right here. And you're going to click somewhere off to the side and up here, you're going to go ahead and type your first and last name period, whatever number it would be, and you're going to go ahead and simply click off to the side and you'll see it's listed up there. Once you have all of it dimensioned, you got all your shapes drawn, you're going to go ahead and you're going to go ahead and say file, print, and you're going to make sure that you have the Tech Ed Lab, Tech Ed Lab selected and that you have fit to page, everything looks good, and you'll go ahead and hit OK and print it. Now, you'll want to make sure you go back and do the same to your partner's drawing. You'll draw the shapes and dimension theirs, and you'll print theirs. Once both of them have been printed, you will turn them into your instructor, and your instructor will give you your materials so you can start planning out and following the instruction for creating your catapult in the production lab.